Today's episode of In the Trenches is brought to you by System 12 Guitar Method. Sign up today at RyanRoxy.com. In the Trenches with Ryan Roxy. Hello, 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 and welcome to another live stream episode of In the Trenches with Ryan Roxy. I am your host, and... You know the drill by now, folks. Thank you very much for tuning in. Of course, everything's happening on our YouTube official uh, Ryan Roxy channel. If you hit that subscribe button right now, we want you in the live chat. Of course, if you're listening to us on an audio broadcast, we appreciate that so much, whether it's Apple, Spotify, any of the Google podcast networks, any of those, thank you very much. We'd like you to make your way on over to the Ryan Roxy official YouTube channel because today's episode, it's a big one. I'm telling you, not only do we have a very special guest, um, and you know how I get when we have guys that I have um, played in a band with before, toured with, um, I get very nostalgic, but we also have very good segments today. We have a new segment that we're coming out, plus we have the Hughes and Kentner giveaway for the amp that we're going to be announcing the winner in just a little bit. But first, I'm welcoming you in the trenches. Um, from the first time I saw today's guest play drums, I knew I wanted him in the band. That's not a lie. Apparently, I'm not the only one, as he's been headhunted from some of the biggest names in rock. Alice Cooper, Ted Nugent, Rob Zombie, and Ozzy Osbourne are just a few. Just to name a few. He's also formed Tommy's Rock Trip, and together with a great lineup, they've just released their first album, Beat Up by Rock and Roll. And we're going to dive into all the details of that very, very shortly. But first, would you welcome... Into the trenches, one of my favorite drummers, Tommy Clavetta. <clears throat> now, before right? before we started, you said I was your favorite drummer, and then you flip flopped <laughs> to one what, one what of a, my favorite ones. I mean, because we're yeah, live on the, the air, I can't say the. Yeah, yeah of course, of course of. you do. And then when you see the next guy, you say he's my favorite. That's how it works. <laughs> Just teach you a quick lesson. Thank you. Already, always learning from Tommy Clavetta. Yeah. In fact, I learned how to spell your name. Or I learned how to not just spell it. I learned through. Well, then that ads. means you finally learned how to spell, which is <laughs> you're really you're doing great so far, Ryan. How I you doing, Ryan? It's how you doing, Tommy? I'm it excellent. has been. I'm yeah. excellent, but I'm getting better now. It sounds good. It looks good. Um, honestly, we have had a string of guests. Well, actually, two in a row with handlebar mustaches so this must be a theme that we're going for we had ricky rackman on last week with a uh, handlebar and you I, I must say that you are my favorite handlebar mustache drummer there at least i'm something <laughs> at least i'm number one at something <laughs> always a smarty pants and you know that you know what tommy and i have known each other for a long time and i wanted to bring up this clip just to let you guys know that we have interviewed each other before and it kind of started out a little bit sarcastic the same way vic do you want to run that clip real quick uh, tommy clavetos big hey this is tommy clavetos of the ozzy osbourne band there's a nice lady we're in sweden this is gus g and you're watching all excess with ryan roxy not excess, mind you, excess. There you go. Just to show that you've always had that wit. You're pretty I cool. couldn't hear it, but I don't want to hear it because I don't want to hear what I said. It. No, it's, Did anybody it, hear it? It, it keeps making me tap for the sound, and I'm too lazy to inch in and tap the screen. Oh, oh, okay. But anyways, oh. I remember that. That was like maybe your 33rd show that you've had. <laughs> i've been doing it for a while man but in Good the trenches is sticking. look at we've got a chat room we've got everybody that's in the live chat they're dedicated they're excited there's a lot of people that were here today that well you have about nine people helping you before i get on the show so that's pretty <laughs> that's pretty good it's very professional so far i'm, I'm impressed team Team Rock, so there you go. And you and, and these are not guest seat fillers no these are real fans saying real things to a real drummer there it is he's one of his favorite drummers that's played for ozzy i love that oh that's that's pink sock yeah. pink sock will go with you head to head any old time Pink but sock. Right that's a that's a hell of a handle <laughs> 
Yeah. Don't Google it, folks. Yeah. yeah, I saw them open for Blue Waffle, which is another thing you shouldn't right. Google, folks. Yeah. So let's dive right into the main event because I know that you're used to interviews going, oh, let's talk about the past. Let's talk. No, no, I don't want to talk about the past just yet. Right. I want to talk about what's here and now, and it's Tommy's Rock Trip, right? If you will. I sure. will. I definitely will. Because the album uh, just came out this last week or just very, very recently. Whenever you're watching this, it just came out. It's yeah. beat up by rock and roll. Um, this was released in May 2021. Tell us where the idea to put out an album, because as we were talking before the podcast began, you're not the type of guy that wants to always be in front or wants to always be the spokesperson. Although you have a lot to say, you're very content being the foundation, the drummer, the one that holds it all down. What made you want to make this record? I mean, literally it was because there was nothing going on in music and I make music, you know, with this worldwide shutdown that we're all in the, the, hopefully the, the tail end of, you know, to not play music and not play with my buddies and make music you know, it gets a little lethargic staying in these four walls. I'm in my rehearsal room right now. You can only play so much by yourself. And eventually you got to play with other people. So I got an offer to make a record and my own record. And I'd never made any of my own music before. I'd never had the inkling or really the yearning or, you know, I'm, I'm pretty creatively fulfilled doing what I do, playing in cool rock bands and, and being the drummer totally happy with that so it never really came into play or into my you know i don't i don't feel i have this oh i gotta make my own tunes in order to be creative i don't really have that side it doesn't concern me but that being said with nothing going on i, I kind of go well why not it's the perfect opportunity i took it as a challenge and a kind of a little experiment to myself to see if i could actually write a song if i could actually put a band together if i could write lyrics if i could arrange songs if i could record them so and if i could do that would i actually like what i got on tape and i did kind of like what i got on tape i liked where it was going so i continued and i made a whole record and and here it is and if i dig it i was very happy with it and I just wanted to make a cool little old school kind of rock and roll record for myself. And if other people dig it too, then that's just a total bonus to me. Well, so I that's, it. It. that's it in a nudge in a nutshell. Yeah. You, you, you make music and make you want to drive your cars fast. And I think you, you alluded to that in a few other interviews where you say, I just want to make music that will make you want to drive fast or, you know, if you're listening to it, it makes you more excited. And I think, at the end of the day, that is the essence of rock and roll. And you talk about my team that we put together here at In the Trenches, which obviously I'm really happy about and thankful for. You put a great team to put this album together as well, starting off with you know, a guy that's very you know, familiar to both of us. We both toured with Eric Dover in the Alice Cooper band together. He is well, there perfect you go. picture. <laughs> that says it all, right there. I'd, I'd like to see a little bit more a picture Vic might have of uh, Eric Dover's dental work. You have that? There you go. <laughs> right. That's not, that was a shot that I wanted. Right. But um, Ryan yeah. has that. Ryan has that picture on a full poster blow up hanging above his bed. <laughs> well, only in the yeah. tour bus. Right. Only in the tours bus. But we. But both you and I um, played in the Alice Cooper band. Toured with Eric Dover. He's such a a great. Natural he's a nutcase. Man. He's yeah. a nutcase. He's everything. He's yeah. pure rock star. And and you got him in the band, but you also had, and I want you to give credit where credit's due to the other band members. I know there's Elliot on bass. And is that his bass right now in back of you? That's actually my no. Well, that's no, that's it's all my stuff. Well, he Everybody, borrowed all your stuff for the video, obviously. Yeah, because nobody has stuff anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You're really angry about that. You see, I, you... I am. I'm very angry about it because it's not the same. No, I don't. No. It's not the same. It doesn't, okay, it doesn't feel the same as when you, it may sound the same going through some speakers, but it doesn't feel the same. Wow. And when I'm playing music, it's kind of like when I say I want people to drive fast to the record, whatever that means, it may sound stupid, but I, I want, I want, when I play drums, I want people to feel tension and, and, and feel like it's going to blow up at any minute. So I wanted to kind of capture that feel on a band. All my favorite music is like 
damn, you want to hear it, it pumps you up and it makes you feel it rocks. So I wanted the music to rock. Guitar know? driven, power driven, however you want to call it. You're, yeah. I mean, obviously there's some songs on the, on the album that are uh, drum driven as well, but I'm, I'm getting to the other members of the band. Why don't you introduce, because I've already said, Eric yeah, there's Dover. a great young, a great young bass player named Elliot who played awesome. He could, he did exactly. He, he gave me exactly what I wanted. A, a great lead guitar player, Hank J. He goes by the Afro guy there. And then there was a rhythm guitar player, uh, now Nakashima, who's from Japan. And he oh. played the rhythm guitar. And that was it. I kept it very simple. I didn't, you know, we didn't even really do any, barely any overdubs. And we recorded it in one room. We rehearsed right here, learned the songs. We didn't do any demos. And we literally went down the street to my buddy's barn and recorded in front of each other, all the amps in the same room, everything bleeding into each other. We didn't even wear headphones, no click tracks, no old school, That's no it. cutting and pasting, nothing. We recorded it first note to the last note. And that's the truth. And I, I wanted to do it that way. And it's even more there, than a garage band record. That's a barn band record. It's with, it's yeah. I mean, but all my favorite records, when you read about records, well, we did the record when we didn't have a budget and we just played our live set. And I go, well, that's what I want. I want it to sound like it's our live set because that's what it would be, mm -hmm. you know? And I didn't want to do demos because when you do demos, some usually the demos turn out better than the record. There's, because, there's no such thing as demos anymore, I don't think. Yeah. I think in today's Well, no, world, I think they're... You think you so? Shoot, I think you shoot for the album right now because I think that mentality of saying, "Oh, we'll fix it, we'll get it better in the, you know, in the mix, or we'll get it better when we do it for real." Those days are kind of gone. For one, because there's no budgets for it, and for two, you've got the equipment right now to make it sound amazing. So just put in the performance, and I, I truly yeah. But there's a lot of this sending ideas back and forth, and you get familiar. And sometimes when you think you have too much option and too much time to think about things, you stray away from your initial idea, which is usually the best. Well, part of that's songwriting too, though. I mean, and that's what yeah. gonna, I, I was going to say. How did you? How did you guys write this song back and forth, or did you come in with a bunch of ideas and say, "Guys, these are my ideas"? Or how did those ideas go back and forth during these times? As you know, I can't play a melodic instrument. So that is a detriment. So there was a lot of, I sang all the guitar riffs and all the ideas to a guitar player. We recorded them simply and just got riff by riff by riff. And then I listened to those riffs and I put them together. And we, then we went over those again and we made them into songs over and over. It was as, it's as grinding it out as you could, you know? And then I, you know, it just let my ears take me where I was going to go. Well, I didn't know that you couldn't play any other musical instruments besides the drums because i always assumed you had a guitar around and that you played a few chords and that's you sort of dave grolled no. it and sort of no i no, not at all none of, of us none of that <laughs> no, none of that I but, I, but i do know what the instrument should be playing at the time if that makes yeah. sense i know i just know so you have your you have your ideas and your visions about these songs, and it obviously worked out because the album is out right now. Um, one thing I didn't know is that you sang as much lead as you do, and you took three songs on this uh, on this album to sing lead. And yeah. I also if you call saw, it that. Well, no, the new single is it the smile song that you're singing. Yeah, there's I'm, there's a one song called "Make Me Smile." That make I me sang. smile. That's 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 the newest one that that, that you're on. Now, that's the newest video. No, not a video. I, I know it's on YouTube and it's an audio version yeah. or something. Any, anyways, it doesn't matter. I did sing three songs. Eric Dover. Well, back to Eric. Back to Eric Dover. What a great job he did. I mean, I couldn't have asked for more. He was so great in the studio. All I had to do was here's the melody, which I gave him scratch vocals, and I'll get to that in a minute, and. Here's the words. And it was so effortless with him. He's such a, he just gets it very easily. And that's oh. nice to work with somebody when they get it because he's, he's talented. You know what talented I mean? As fuck. Always, um, yeah. He's talented. And he, and he wasn't too good to not do what I wanted. You know what I mean? He, he's always, always humble about it. Wh no which is, it. which is a very important thing. You, you try to give Alice what I want, what he wants. I want to give whoever I play for. You have to set yourself aside. 
you know? Yeah. And he did that for me. Um, cause he probably would have naturally saying some things differently than I wanted. Um, but that being said, he is, I know he's, he can go very avant-garde, but it's great to hear him just sing straight rock because what a, he's really a rocker at heart, you know? Yeah. 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 I think. Well, the, the thing is you made his job much easier than slash had on the first snake pit record, because I think he had to come in on those records and that first record, he had to come in with songs already recorded. So he had to come up with melodies and lyrics. Maybe there was a couple lyrics here and there, but he had to basically do it all. So at least you gave him a little bit to work with, you know, I gave him everything to work. He just had to sing. That was, you know, it's like, which I, I mean, I guess that's good and bad, but it worked out fine. But it wasn't his all thing to come you up recorded, with stuff. There, there is an album version of this with all your vocals on it. No, there's not an album version. Oh. There, no, no. I just, I would literally sing the songs into my iPhone, kind of thing. <laughs> Please and, still have those. I want to hear those. Those should be yeah, the yeah, unreleased. Oh, beautiful. Somebody oh, but, had. Well, I mean, the, there's phone. not a version of me doing scratch vocals, but. I mean, he ideas. may have them or something. There's ideas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Anyways, but the only reason I sang was because I was doing the scratch vocals for him. And there was three that actually I listened to. And I go, well, that doesn't sound that bad. And then the second thought was the one song, Make Me Smile, is about my wife. I had to sing that song. Or if Eric Boy. sang it, she would fall in love with him. <laughs> and we, I don't want that to As happen. the story would go. No, yeah. yeah. And... and, I, and <laughs> and you don't want any woman to fall in love with that mouth because they will they will leave no. you in a heartbeat. No, now, I think many mouth can do. Oh God! Um, <laughs> and we've seen it. Well, not that way. <laughs> and then another song is about my daughter, so I had to sing that for my daughter called "The Power of Three. And then there's another song, and I just said, "Screw it, leave it. It's done." It wasn't making me puke when I heard the vocal, so I just left it. <laughs> That's all there was to it, you know. Well, that was, well, I mean, you did, that That was called, you know, Beat Up by Rock and Roll, the third song that you sang, and it's the album title. So that made sense right. as well. Well, it, you didn't have to be a great singer to sing those songs, and I proved it. <laughs> yeah. Did you have other family members on the record? I know you sang about your wife, you sang about your kid, but did you? Did your father actually I don't uh, know, did, did he? What are you alluding to? I'm just yes. wondering. Yeah, I'm on the wondering. on the song, my father's a saxophone player. On the song "The Power of Three, he played a saxophone solo. I sang that song, and then my daughter has a little cameo in that song. It's the very last last song on the album, so it's a it's a three layers of clefetis on three generations of clefetis on that song. So it's a gift to my dad. It's a gift to my daughter. You know, yeah. so that that was reason enough for me to do the whole record right there. The clefetis legacy and that's what you call yeah. serving up a softball to you see it yeah. hit it out of the park right. now now you just won the hearts and minds of all of everybody that's in the uh, chat because they said well oh, if, I'm go check if, it out. if somebody hears this song they're gonna say what a good dad i guarantee it and is that the power of three you your father and your daughter no it's me my wife and my daughter is that's the power of three my yeah. wife is a wonderful singer she's just too damn shy to do anything so she's she's no use to me in that in that arena <laughs> does she ever uh jam in the rehearsal room that you're in right she now? she will like she'll she's has a beautiful voice i'm not even joking i can't believe it and she'll come in here she'll ask me to turn on the mic but you can't come in here she she'll like do it for an hour by herself or go upstairs but it's a rarity but if you walk in she like she clamps up so whatever oh. Beat Up by Rock and Roll, the new album from Tommy's Rock Trip. I like it. I like that you made it, you made it a name. You know, you got your name in there, but you still didn't make it a solo project. Well, it I, reminds me, hearkening of Roxy 77 a little bit. I don't want to say it's a nod to Roxy 77, but I, good on you for doing that. I don't want to say it's a nod to Roxy 77 either. <laughs> Nobody wants to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have it. a horrible last name. <laughs> for an album and i didn't i don't really consider it a solo album it's just a rock record with some good musicians on it you know I mean, it just you're sounds so up. you're serving me up softballs because when you talk about your last name vic are you ready to run that clip again how good i've been 
at getting your name right, Mr. Tommy Clefettis. And that's well, what we I are mean, with right now. On the uh, on the drums, Tommy yeah. Clefettis. Yeah. This is the way I used to say it, Vic. Uh, Tommy Clefettis, big, big... Uh, Clefettis, by the way. For the last eight years, Clefettis. <laughs> Clefettis. <laughs> Clefettis. Dude, I'm just going with what Ozzy says on stage, okay? Does he say it right? Yeah, does he say he it right? He can say whatever he wants. Exactly. In Clefettos. 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 Come on, Roxovich. Come on, Roxovich. That's the last thing yeah. you said. Anyway. That's your last name, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's an abbreviation of a Polish name, and yeah, you know, you know the story. Just, just no, go check out my Wikipedia. It is what it is. I mean, you, you can't even come up with a stage name for Clefettis. It doesn't work. <laughs> People have been doing it for years, though, man. Yeah, they just know you as Tommy, the powerhouse drummer, and the one that okay. they, they plays with pretty much the biggest rock stars. I don't um, care. If people there. know me. I just want to be, I just want to do my gigs and go home, you know? Yeah, you've kind of always had that. Like yeah. I said, you, I, I've, and, and you know this, you know, when I said head hunting, you know, you've been head hunted to a lot of bands. Chuck and I actually kind of headhunted you from Ted Nugent because the minute I saw you play, I was like, I brought Chuck <laughs> in. I said, who's that guy? Because if, if we ever need a drummer and the, you know, the usual suspects uh, can't do it, Tommy's our guy. And Chuck goes, I believe, you know, a hundred percent. And then, then we went on to play with Alice and we went on to play. And then you went on to play with Rob and Ozzy and Black Sabbath and all the way up till right now. So um, I don't know. That was a little bit of hyping up the new album. That's good. But I appreciate you, it. Yeah. I, that's it is what, we what it do. is. I, I made my, a, a little record that I'm happy with and whatever comes out of it is no big deal to me. It's not Sergeant Peppers. It's not going to change top the charts or anything like that i made it for myself to do something and that's all there is to it so it is what it is it's out there let the people yeah. decide we're gonna yeah. let the people speak in a little while but uh right now i'm gonna go full screen there vic because right now it is time for our hughes and kentner giveaway i know it's not just tommy clefettis that we've been uh waiting to see it a lot of you want to see who's gonna win home take home this amp and you know it might not be as big as the amps behind me, but it is a 25 watt full analog power amp. So it's a little bit, it's kind of like in between of what Tommy's talking about with everybody now not playing with any amps and then those big, huge amps that Tommy has behind him. This will work anywhere in your apartment, in your house, in your rehearsal studio. You can take it anywhere. All right. So here's our giveaway. Um, a couple weeks ago, the good people over at Hughes and Kentner gave us the Spirit of Metal Lamp to give away to one of our Roxy Guitar Army supporters, and today is the day. So uh, stay tuned for more giveaways like this by subscribing to this Roxy Ryan Roxy official YouTube channel, as well as the Hughes and Kentner and Ryan Roxy social media platforms. So you can do that right now by hitting that subscribe button. But are you ready to the winner? All right. Um, <coughs> the winner is, drum roll please, Tommy, I know you're not in by the drums, but we can have a drum roll please. It is Matt Alger. There you go, Matt. Now you're going to have to decide which of his boys, uh, Samin or Ali, get it. Or maybe you all can share custody of the amp three ways. So there you go. Congratulations, Matt. That's very Thank nice. You there you go. I will be mailing that out to you. If you want me to sign it and devalue it, I will do that as well. But uh, that was part of the deal. We will talk to you, Matt. I'll get in touch with you. I know you're in the chat or maybe you're uh, watching and listening to the podcast right now because you are listening to In the Trenches with Ryan Roxy. And our guest today is Tommy Clefettis, a drummer of Tommy's Rock Trip and a few other bands that you might have heard about because we're going to talk about a few of those other bands, if you don't mind, Tommy, in a section we like to call Let's Get Back to Go Forward. <laughs> I think it should be get back to go forward, but we said go back to get forward. It doesn't matter. It's all good. Um, I'm not going to talk to you, Tommy, so much about um, I, a, a long history of, of, of what you've done because that kind of speaks for itself. And anybody who wants to go um, Google your sort of past lineage, they'll see that you are definitely come from pedigree of great bands. But I, what I'd like you to do, if you're cool with it, 
Can you give me a one word answer to each of these bands? Okay. Okay. I'll try. That'll yeah. make things easy, right? And we'll do it kind of chronologically. One word answer. Um, where would I go first? Mitch Ryder. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. That's two words. <laughs> no. Mitch uh, One word? Well, if you can, or a feeling. Detroit. 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 There you go. See, that's perfect yeah. because you were born and raised in Detroit. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Okay, and you're a Detroit guy, and and that's maybe. Wow. Oh my God, where did you get that? That is, uh, that's the power of our team of Vic Shalfont, okay, the wow, producer. He'll God. go back to. I, I can you put that picture back up, Vic? Because I haven't seen that as well. Um, w tell us about that kit. I, I I don't even know what that is. I didn't even know it was me. I thought it was Mike Fasano. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I must be like in high school or something. I remember I had long hair in high school, and oh my God, this is classic. <laughs> You guys are idiots. <laughs> well, we're idiots over yeah. here in the trenches. But guess what? We put the work in to figure it out. Thank you, Vic, for putting those up. All right. <clears throat> we'll move on then. So Detroit. Um, I guess the next one would be Alice Cooper. One word. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking of a one word. One word. It, I mean, it's a, a long form It's a long-form podcast. You can think for as long as you want, and it's not going to be consequential Di it's fine diet coke <laughs> that is true he yeah. does have a diet coke all the time <laughs> and the hand or you, you could have just done the hand St gesture as well stage show is what i think with alice cooper stage show that's true even though you did the bare bones tour with us oh my god that was not when you were in no alice that's cooper, ted nugent way. that's ted nugent okay. era okay well and i guess I guess I messed up chronologically because I said I was going to go chronological. Yeah. Uh, Ted, Nug Ted Nugent would be the next one. One word. Ted, Nug Ted Nug Sweat. Well, there you go. Sweat. We, we said Alice. The next in line would be Rob Zombie. Um, why don't I just talk about these guys? One word is. is yeah, well, because is, I thought that talking about these guys was one of those things that perhaps in interviews, because you're not a guy that likes to do a lot of in depth interviews. And I'm getting stumped. So Rob is a total professional. Rob has a great ear for music. He he knows exactly what he wants, and he knows his vision, and he knows what the audience wants. There, okay. there's my one word. Okay. Here's As little... does Al. Alice and him are very similar that way. But Rob knows to keep it street, which I do like that about him. Okay. And always has, right? Yeah, for the most part, I would say, yeah. I, and I learned that from Rob. Like, when I was making a record, just keep it fucking simple. You know, don't get too... In fact, his, his records are a little more going on than mine. But, like, just the approach. Keep it simple, you know? Okay. Stupid. K-I-S-S. -S. Yes. So... The thing about it was doing research for this interview, because I always try to do as much research as I can. I did not know that you made more records with John Five than you did in Rob Zombie, even though it was the same time frame. I believe you made three or four records with Rob and you made four or five with John Five. I have correct? no idea. I, you know, that was just, you know, a drummer helping his guitar player out in a band kind of thing. Four or five albums yeah. times. You actually yeah, yeah. helped me out. You helped me he, out with it. With he actually times. owes me a lot of money for those. <laughs> there it is, John Five. Yeah. <laughs> we we just outed you right now. Um, there's some, I I did not I didn't even have John Five as a one word uh, name. I guess it would be uh, I O. I mean, I I didn't. You know, doing that that kind of stuff is not really my bag. It's much more technical than what I do. But I remember that was a challenge. So I said, why not do it? You know what I mean? But. Uh, don't you think that you approach as a drummer every situation just a little drum, a little bit different? You don't play drums the same way you play for Alice as you do for uh, Black Sabbath as you do for Absolutely Rob not. Absolutely not. But I can still be myself by doing what I do. But I do not take the same approach. Absolutely not. You know, there's an essence that every that these great bands are known for. So you want to try to get what makes the vibe of their music and try to capture the spirit of the, of the, of the yeah track, and you can, or, or and you can always you can always do your own thing through your energy and your approach but 
you can still play the parts that the original guys did and make them your own that way. So I don't like to stray. You know, there's certain signature parts in all these bands. And I don't like when I go see a band and, and the guy's missing stuff, you know, because there's certain things as a, as a spectator that you want to hear. And you owe it to those people to give them that moment, I feel, anyways. Not just missing stuff. How about filling in stuff? Like, oh, that, that's even worse. That's even worse. That, so, which, you know, even when I joined Alice's band, I remember I, you, you get rehearsal tapes of bands. And this is, happens for most bands that I join. And you go, what are these guys doing? What are they playing? <laughs> it's whether it's too much noodling on, you know, Alice Cooper is not noodling on the guitar. You know, in the 80s, he had the moment. But that original Alice Cooper stuff is a rock band. It's genius. It's parts. Stuff parts locking together, in together. Man. Yeah. It's yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you wanted, you know, I think when we played together in Alice's band, we kind of did our own good versions of that stuff. You know, I think we had to lock together even more because you know, a couple shows it was one guitar player. But I mean, for the most part, you know, with Dover. Speaking and I, of Eric Dover. <laughs> The reason why we love him so much. Okay, then, then, let's tell the story because I love this story about Eric Dover. <laughs> really? You know, right. Eric Dover liked to drink at the time. He really liked to drink. He liked his drink. Yeah, he, yeah. And we were playing somewhere in Wisconsin. I think it actually was Wisconsin. I thought it was and Pittsburgh. He, I thought it was somewhere around. No, we, that's where we did the gig where you played, played guitar. Yeah, I guitar. remember. I, I, I do feel that I, I honestly think that I do. You did great. Hold that you record. Well, I, I remember the feeling of everybody coming together, us just going, let's go do this because it's going to no, be the rocked. first time the first time that Alice has ever played with one guitar player. So on the fly, I'm making up two guitar player parts, trying to choose which one well, to you go. you fill it up, you know? Yeah. Well, we, and, and remember we, so anyways, Eric <laughs> Dover was having his moment with the bottle. He ends up climbing the scaffolding with his guitar on his back. He's yeah. all the way at the top of the light truss. Yeah. Oh, and my you God. Hear, you hear the biggest clang and guitar ringing. He <laughs> fell down from the light truss, basically passed out on the stage, and his guitar was just going, <laughs> like, it was great. It was great. And then, then he had to go somewhere after that. And then... Yeah. I remember, think he got that idea do you, from... Do you remember, wasn't that the same tour that Fee Wabel, uh, the lead singer of The Tubes, we did a show either... It couldn't have been that far after or maybe a little bit before where Fee Wabel did the same thing in these platforms. And I have a feeling, Eric, I could, that's a good idea. <laughs> I just, I love, as much as I'm not that guy, if I was at that concert, I would have been, this is awesome. You know, because it's those moments that you go, like, I remember my dad would take me to see Jerry Lee Lewis at the Fox Theater and he would come out drunk and he's like just playing these country ballads and people are saying, you know, great balls. And he's saying, you know, fuck you back to him in the audience. And it's like, you look back and you go, this is kind of, this is rock and roll. You know, it's unexpected. It's unhinged. And then 10 minutes before he's supposed to end, he kicks into all the hits and the crowd goes berserk. You know, when there's this tension kind of thing and the wackiness, it does make for some great, as much as I'm not that guy, I do like it. Oh, it's you know? theater. And, and of course, if you're observing it and you're part of it, but you're not involved in it and you're not and getting the, the it's actual... It's even better. Yeah, the blade isn't pressed against your neck, but you're watching yeah. it from a from a safe distance. Yeah, it's a, it's or, or at least a, a distance with inside the bubble. Did your father, getting back to your father, did you think he um, pushed you to become a musician or did you just gravitate no, you to can't be that? You can't be pushed to be a musician. You can't... You can be prodded to pretend you're going to be a musician and to maybe think that you are but it's too hard of a game and it's too tough on your mind and it's too tough on your heart to go through that and continue no matter what you have to have it in your dna you have to have it in your soul there has to be no choice in the matter. So I didn't have a choice from the time I he he knew that I had it in me and he he gave me everything that I needed to bring it out of me and, and give me the tools in order to do it for the rest of my life. And he was my biggest teacher out of anybody still to this day. And he's my biggest supporter, but he was also my biggest critic. 
meaning that you had to perform and you had a job to do. And um, as much as he, you know, it's always great to, to applaud your kids and, but you also have to be real with your kids, you know? Well, and I think did to get your preparation uh, going, and I don't know if that's from you or if did he help and, and help with that and help guide that. But the one thing I know about you and your gigs, whether we've played in jam bands or whether we've played in, you know, touring bands, your preparation, you're always prepared. In fact, you're over prepared and that's respect. You're on time and you're and you're over prepared. I remember when you came to try out for the band initially with Alice Cooper, uh, it was only going to be a three or four song try out because we knew we wanted you anyway we just wanted to see if you can get through the songs without you know completely driving off you know the tracks and you did those three or four songs great i think it was up at gilby's right we recorded yeah, them yeah, yeah. we uh, and we went to gilby's studio and recorded these three or four and then you just said something like yeah do you want to you want to do some more and then we just ended up and then you go which what do you mean and then you said i know the whole entire brutally live dvd if you want to do the whole entire set so, boom, right there. You had the Well, game. I mean, I mean to do music, you got to give a person a you can't give somebody a reason to say no when you're in these situations. So, if I knew the whole show and I played good and I was a nice guy and I did the job, what are the what what's the answer you're probably going to get, you know? It's pretty simple when you stop to think about it. But in order, you know, how, do, you know, I'm sure you get the same thing. Kids come up. How do I be successful? How do I do what you do? Yeah. And they, they act like they want to hear the answer, but they really don't want to hear the answer. They <laughs> don't want to hear that. You got to stay up late and you got to commit to music and do all the, do all the things that it takes. They don't want to hear that. They want to mm -hmm. hear that you go to the NAM show and you hang out and you meet people and you get a business card and you put songs on YouTube. And to me, it's not how you do it. You do the work. And to me, it's a job. It's a craft, but it's also a job. You get paid to do a job. So you have to give a service that's mm -hmm. required. And that's your job to play the music. It's your job to show up on time. I don't show up on time. I'm driving around the block for an hour before. So then I show up on time. You know, I mm -hmm. map before the phones. I mapped out where I was going and I planned my route. You know, when I was driving two hours to Ted Nugent's house today, I would plan my route. I would check the weather. I would leave two hours before I had to leave. I checked my drums before. You know, it's all these kind of extra steps that add up to success. It's not just playing your instrument because that's any idiot can play their instrument. You know what I mean? It's being able to step in when you need a guitar player to play one guitar when it's really a two guitar band. It's stepping up to the <laughs> challenge and performing. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you recall, you had a guy come in to play second guitar. We tried him out and he was horrible. <laughs> Chuck Garrick never lets me forget that. Every but single remember, tour. Remember, the guy was fucking horrible. There was his opportunity. He was good in his band when I had seen him. I know it was his opportunity. Yeah. But there was his opportunity of a lifetime and he, he blew it. Yeah. And oh, music is, in my experience, it's very one shot. At least I've only been given one shot and I had to claw my way to get to that one shot. doesn't matter what bands I've been in before. It doesn't matter anything because you're always the new guy and you have to earn people's trust. And they have, it doesn't matter if I play with Black Sabbath. I, if I'm going to go play with another band, I need to do the same job that I did with them to their music because all they care about is their show at that time. And rightfully so, you know. Yeah. Well, I, that is similar to what I tell younger generations that ask me those same questions, Tommy. It's like, you know, in order to get to that right place at the right time, you have to be in about a thousand wrong places at wrong times. You know, you have to I, be in but a are lot they, of... Are they wrong times or or is it... I mean, I've done... That's the experience, so that's the journey. It, I've done so many gigs where there wasn't anybody there i've done gigs when there was people there but it's all experience and i and i'm very fortunate that it was slow it feels slow, wrong at the slow, time though tommy come on slow, it feels slow, wrong. slow it did it never felt wrong to me i knew that it was part of my journey i had to play holiday inns i had to play weddings i had to play five sets a night because i was i was learning my craft right i was learning my craft and i knew i'm lugging in my drums in the snow and and there's nobody here but 
I'm still going to do it because it's it. You have to be on and performing to the best of your, your ability because sometime somebody's going to see something if it's meant to be. You know what I mean? When you were playing those gigs, were you playing for that room and in the moment, or were you sort of playing for a bigger audience in your head? I mean, to oh. me, I just play. I play, man. I'm going to play my guts out. I learned to play my guts out. And that's something I learned from my dad. I remember one time I was maybe 12 or 13. And we played a Holiday Inn, you know, little bar. You know, Holiday Inns used to have little bars where bands would play, at least in Michigan. And a little lounge, that's what it was, you know. Um, and there was nobody there. And we maybe played three nights in a row. Nobody there, like four sets a night. And driving home from the last one, my dad goes, oh, so what do you think of the gig? And I said something like, oh, maybe it wasn't that good. And he just fucking lost it on me. And he and it taught me a lesson to never look at things that way. There's a job you made money and you give it. I still give it my fullest, but it was just a little a father's. My dad was very tough in these things, but it's there's there's one way to do it. And if you sign on to do it, that's the gig. You know what I mean? Right. So in yeah, order to get to stuff. play for these other bands, you have to look at things that way. You have to yeah. enjoy the the bad parts in order to appreciate the great well, gravy. Like, gigs, I'm, I'm not know? saying those wrong places at wrong times are not enjoyable. I, I sure. enjoyed the I understand what you're out saying. of those empty clubs. You know, the, of course there'd be fun times, but you're looking at it sometimes going, is this ever going to pan out? And my attitude was it's going to pan out. It's going to pan out. It's just not right this moment, but right now I'm going to do what I'm here to I'm going to do what I'm here to do, which is play music, like you said. Yeah, yeah. you just have to have faith in yourself. That's what I'm saying when you're younger, you have to have that drive. And it almost scares me when people ask questions, how do I do this? Because you should already know the answers. You know, there's maybe some technical things that you don't know about, sure, but you shouldn't yeah. be so driven that you just, you're focused on being the, you do everything. That's what you do. You know what mm. I mean? Yeah. Well, and it's a shame me, with this with this internet age. Everybody's like they're so focused on YouTube and Instagram and posting videos that they have no idea how to actually play a gig. You know, there's these great drummers. I see these great young drummers and they can play all these licks and then when it comes to counting in a song at the right tempo or leading a band or pulling it back or, you know, corralling a full musician full group of musicians, let alone 200,000 people, they don't know how to do those kind of things because you can't learn those things unless you have the experience that playing to five people, to 10, to 100, to 2,000, to 20,000, to 200,000, when you've done it every level and then you have, like, I'm just pretty good at what I do because I've had a lot of experience and I've put the work in. Yeah. Well, I, but I, but I never discount any kid that's on YouTube making like tons no pressing because that's a whole nother world that perhaps we don't know about anything is there a dog or is, is yeah no there's yeah yeah <laughs> all right because I, I was gonna say all that credibility that you had with your wife and kid is like went out the door with power of three if that was one well you gotta you gotta <laughs> tell him who's boss too <laughs> That's gonna go, man. Everybody, you won the hearts of everybody with power three, and then you just well, but just dis discipline, <laughs> discipline, Roxy, just Damn. like music. Tommy you C it. taught you well. Tommy C yeah. is credited on the uh, as saxophone player, and obviously he's taught you so much um, about not just the music uh, that you play, but the music business as well. So, dude, thank you for anybody that's watching this that actually says, "Yeah, I want to be in a band." Go listen to the last 20 minutes of Tommy telling you, you know what? You already know how to be in a band. Just start putting in you the just work. Do it. I, I'm not trying to be negative. I don't think it's negative. I think it's being, you're not. I think it's just being, if you have the drive, no matter what, you're going to do it. And don't let other people, because everybody told me I can't do it. You can't play drums like that. You're hitting them too hard. You know, when I play clubs, you can't hit the cymbals like that. You know, and then when I would go see Alice Cooper, I go, well, I bet he wants that. It seems like that everybody. So if I would have listened to everybody, I'd be nowhere, you know. So you got to follow your guts. You got. Oh, boy. Look at that trio. Look at that trio, um, man. 
Yeah, and I like the height ratio too. It's like it's a perfect <laughs> slope downward. Is that really what Glenn Sobel's body would look like if he had no shirt on? He have he doesn't have any internal organs apparently. I love that. What is that, Vic? Was it where did you get that shot from? And uh, there it is, Eric Singer on the right, Glenn Sobel in the middle, Tommy Clefettis on the left, all dr- Alice Cooper alumni. How about that? Yeah. I didn't know that. There's well, been hey, many, man, haven't there? There have been, but more guitar players, not as many drummers. You can add, you can add Winston Watson, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy as well is on there, you know? I'm, I'm, I'm well, gonna he had, a lot, he had a lot more before your era, too, you know? Neil Smith, yeah. Oh, oh, no. damn, you're right. He's yeah, had tons I'll, of them, man. You crazy? Jimmy DeGrasso, um, I've played, I'm just thinking of the drummers I've played with. And, and yeah, Neil I, Smith, the original, but all those bands from the 80s. Yeah, you're right, you're right. But I, I guarantee you more guitar players. Has to be, I would say. Than anything, you know? is that what you're saying? I, I don't any, know the history. Yeah, I'm just more, saying. More guitar players in, in the Alice Cooper band than, than, than in drums. In 50 years, Alice has had a lot of guys. <laughs> That's not a knock. I'm saying he's a survivor. He survives. Oh, Alice, of all, Alice hey, is the perfect example of he plows through, and I respect him about that. He out of all the he, guys in Alice Cooper's works. band, we're two of them. And you know what? Yeah. If I got if I got sick and couldn't play the show, show would go on. If you got Absolutely. sick, couldn't play the show, Absolutely. show would go on. If I, wouldn't get, sick, I wouldn't get sick and couldn't play the show. Get it's not going to Yeah. Not gonna I would happen. get sick. <laughs> but you play it sick. You've played shows sick. I'm sure you have. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I play where I'm, I literally, you don't know where you are. Like, like you're going to fall off the drum stool at any minute. And you're so hot. Oh, that, look at that. Stefan Adika. Look at that. Well, that guy. was the, that was the Whitey curse. Stefan Adika and uh, Tommy Clefettis. Whitey curse is a great guitar player. He's one of my favorite guitar players. He would, Another, be a, he would be a great guitar player in Alice, even though I don't think you guys could contain him, but he is a great guitar player. Oh, look at this. We're happy with the lineup, Tommy. We're, we're going to, uh, we just want to get out there and tour. We just want to book shows. Al- um, Alice always has a great band, and you guys always sound great. Always trying to deliver. Always trying to get out there. Um, is Tommy's Rock Trip planning any touring coming up for 2021? I'm, I have no plans to do so. I have no plans to not do so. That being said, if somebody, you know, there's a tune on my album that said, you got the cash, I got the flash. That basically says it all. So if somebody's, <laughs> Somebody says, let's go, and they got electricity, then I'll probably plug in. I love it. Well, now it's time for the people to speak, because maybe one of these people that's going to speak in the next segment uh, will actually uh, book you guys or book Alice Cooper or just get some sort of show going on again. Yeah. It's time for Let the People Speak. Come on. So Vic has been collecting uh, questions from the chat room. What do you think about the show, huh? This is very, pro- very professional. I like it. Mm-hmm. Good job. Filled with sheep samples and all. Um, everybody, if you're just tuning in, we're here with Tommy Clefettis, uh, drummer of Tommy's Rock Trip, and so many others. Just hit that subscribe button right now, and uh, you're going to want to go back and get a lot of inspirational messages coming uh, through this episode. That sounded weird. But anyway, this is Let the People Speak. Questions from the chat room. First question up at My Fatal Desire. How was it for you to get the news of replacing Bill Ward? And were you nervous on that first Black Sabbath gig? Uh, I think because I've had so much experience, every gig that I've had, I've come in after a drummer. That's just, you know, with these guys you've I've played with, they've been all doing it for around 50 years. You're always coming in after somebody. And at the moment, it's always a big issue. But I wouldn't say I replaced Bill Ward. I was just the drummer that got asked to do the tour. And was I nervous? I wouldn't say nervous, but I'm always conscious of doing a good job. And and the Black Sabbath thing, that was, you know, it's a little different because it's more of a, it's four guys who are recognized as each a counterpoint to the sound. So I just wanted to go in and do it, the music justice. And again, bring the attitude of what the people wanted to hear to the music and just do my best. So I think I did that. I know I did my best and and I was part of those four guys on those gigs. And I don't think anybody walked out disappointed. I was lucky enough to see you at a stadium 
sort of show in uh, Stockholm. You came and uh, I remember invited yeah. me out. It was a very great show. So thank you very much for that. I'm moving on to at Layla Art. What's been your favorite band in to play? So what has been your favorite band to play in so far? I can't speak. She can type though. All the bands that I've played for are my favorite at the time, because when I do something, I go in, honestly, I go in 110%. I give it my all. And I, maybe to a fault sometimes I'm, you know, I don't, when I'm in a group, I don't do a lot of outside things because I look at like, I'm your guy. I'm in your band. So I want to be your guy. So I focus on your music, even on the off time, you know, in between Black Sabbath tours, I'm, I'm learning more Black Sabbath songs. So, so hopefully I get better as the tour goes on, you know, so I don't have a favorite. Every level of what I've done has been my favorite at the time, because again, it's the journey and not the destination. This was that awesome. your favorite band back when uh, that you was were in not high my school? favorite band? That was not because <laughs> I hated high school because I was playing music all the time, and I'm like, what am I doing here? Well, they, you were at the wrong place at the wrong time. Proving my point, not every gig is perfect. Come on. Well, that was school. That wasn't a gig. I wasn't making money, so. Ah, okay. Well played. Well played. I'll take that. Money um, helps, baby. It makes the world go round. You oh, know. Yeah. Um, Money isn't everything, but it sure helps. Yeah, I know. It, 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 it yeah. can't buy you happiness. Yeah. Wait, what, what did yeah. David Lee Roth say? Money can't buy you man, money can't buy you happiness, but it can buy you a yacht to pull right up next to it. Right, Something right, like right. I mean, it's not about the money, but you you know, it helps. Put it that way. All right. At Bellinger, at Bellinger writes, who was your What's inspiration up, to become who you are now? Well, I would say, let me guess, I think it would be your father. But Yeah, I mean, my dad other... was a big musical inspiration. My family now is my biggest inspiration. You know, I want to take care of my family. Um, and I just want to do the best, the, be the best dad I can be, be the best husband I can be and have a and continue my musical career. And and what a gift to be able to support my family doing something that I love. So for that, for that, I'm the most successful guy I know because I have a great family. I have a very supportive wife who gets what I do. She supports me. She understands it's my job. She understands it's what puts a roof over our head. So she never tells me, don't go practice your drums right now. Like to me, you've got to be an idiot to say that. But she, she's my biggest supporter. She's the wonderful mom, the best mom. My daughter's amazing. She's so talented and full of life. And I'm just so successful because I, I have all these great things in my life that make me a very happy guy. You've won the hearts back. After snapping yeah. at the dog, you won yeah. the hearts back. See, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a give and take. It's what it is. But <laughs> I was actually snapping at my wife. Get the hell out of here. I'm talking on the phone. <laughs> I don't even have a dog. <laughs> then you lost him again. Yeah. Then you lost. I love okay. it. She, she, she still loves forth. me. <laughs> but as far as in, in um, inspiring drummers, do you have any of those as See, well? I didn't, this is the uh, weird question for me because I didn't. I started playing music in bands so early that I never got stuck on the drummer thing. I was more into watching front men, how they carried an audience and and manipulated an audience or watching a guitar player see i'm more connected to the guitar than i am drums meaning to me uh, in a rock band i'm thinking of how do my hi-hats fit with that rhythm guitar how is the cadence of the riff how do i fit with that these are the things i'm thinking about i'm not thinking about drummer stuff because i'm thinking about drummer stuff in a band and i think sometimes when you get too stuck on Oh, I'm into Neil Peart. I'm into John Bonham. And I'm you get too stuck on the drums. It's mm -hmm. how do drums fit into a, in my situation, a rock band usually, you know, if that answers your question. No, it does answer my question. Good. Have you ever been to a drummer's lunch? No. I get okay. invited to those. I, the last thing I want to do is sit around <laughs> and talk drums with a bunch of drummers. I think I'd That's shoot myself. <laughs> I buy all their That's lunches so bite. I don't have to That's go. That's all I needed, my sound bite. You're going to get yeah. love from the, all the drummers. I love it. Well, I, I didn't even know it was coming. All right. Well, it's just hey. I don't like to talk muso stuff all day I long. Know. I hate it. There's talking band stuff and and that's different to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's more of a hang. 
That's yeah. Thing. Well, that, there's our name tags. Vic hasn't put them up for the entire show, but I'm Ryan Roxy. There's Tommy Clefettis right there. And you are watching. He's Drummer lunch. Head. Drummer lunch. <laughs> what does that even mean? I don't know. I'd rather go to know. lunch with my daughter, a three-year-old daughter with crayons than a bunch of drummers talking about yeah. practice pads. We've gone on a few lunches. Yeah, last time I think you paid, so next time I do. Yeah. Um, okay, we'll I, stick with that story. Perfect. <laughs> At local events, what is your favorite song? Come on, Vince. Same, same answer. Yeah, what do you do? You know, there's so I, many that, I mean, that's my fault. I, I mean, I don't have... What I love... I'll give you some of my favorite music. It's the early rock. Chuck Berry, Little Richard, Bo Diddley, Fats Domino, Jerry Lee Lewis. I love old blues. I love Elmore James. I love Jimmy Reed, Arthur Crudup, um, Muddy Waters. I love all the drums on this kind of stuff because it's, to me, I, I take the pulse and the feel of that and I try to inject it into this whatever I do. I want to have that foundation in what I do. And I listen to that type of music. You know, I listen to old country music. You can listen to Hank Williams music, you know, the original Hank. And there's a great groove and there's a great melody and there's great soul in that music. So just listen to music, you know, but that foundation, that early rock is, that's where, what I really love. So there's your answer, you local Vince. Uh, Tommy Clefetta's favorite song, Tutti Fruity and the Monday night uh, football theme song. Is that is my fair and No, yeah, that's Hank Williams <laughs> Jr., Roxy. You missed the whole point. Zoom. Talk, talk about it. I was just fishing. I was fishing and you yeah, butt yeah. the hook. You bit the hook. All right. Last question over here. Oh, this is a good question. At Celine Flora String, will you ever come back to the dead daisies or are the I'm, daisies dead to you? I am in the dead daisies as we speak. The daisies live. It's a lie. Yeah, um, I love it. We're supposed to go gig. We're doing supposed to go do gigs mid June to mid July. I think mainly in the Midwest. And now, I'm looking forward to pl playing music again and getting out there because it's been a bit. Are you are you back in the Daisies? Like like, if, uh, are you, could you be the one person that's that's gone away and then come back? Are you a returning member of the Dead Daisies, or when did you join the Dead Daisies? I I I filled in for them one time like for a three week tour in Europe. And we actually opened for kiss with Eric at, at that time. And then they okay. called me back. They needed a drummer and I was free to do so. And I play music. So let's go play music. It was as there simple as that. So there you heard it first. Will you ever come back to the dead daisies? He's back, baby. Tommy's yeah. back, but you know what? I don't want the, the focus on today's episode is obviously Tommy's rock trip, but maybe yeah, it uh, doesn't maybe. matter to me. It's all, it's all, whatever. It's all music. we're just talking, huh? man. All right. Well, we're just talking. I just hope whenever I do these little things, I just hope that young people can kind of get it. I just, I feel bad for young. Well, I don't feel bad, but it just seems to me that when people talk about music, they talk about so much about all this other stuff that can kind of miss screw young people's, take on what being a musician is about so i hope when they listen to my words that it either makes them plow forward or go away and maybe say this is not for me because that's okay too because i've seen a lot of musicians they're 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 45 50 and they've wasted their whole life chasing a dream that really wasn't meant for them in the first place mm -hmm. okay, and that's so a made... that's a drawback to music too you know what i mean where they get into it for the wrong reasons if you're getting into the, it to be a rock star, unless you are a rock star, it's a problem. Right. right. If that makes any sense. There's only no. so many stars. Ozzy Osbourne is a star. Steven Tyler is a star. Alice Bubba Cooper Bush, is a know, star. Alice Cooper, they're stars. They're meant to be those guys. And you can't think that you're going to be that guy. You just are that guy. And there's only a handful of those guys. So... Fuck. You know what I mean? I just yeah, it, well, it irks irks me when people I want to be a star, or I want to get chicks, or I want to make money. It's all the wrong motives. You're you know mo money and fame. It's possible it can come out of loving music. It doesn't go the other way. Yeah, but wanting to meet chicks and sort of be popular is not something that's too uncommon for a lot of rock stars that eventually 
that dream does come true. Yeah, but put, I think it, at it, the it, bottom line, it sounds cool, but I think they, you, yeah, if there's you're, Mick, there's if you're Mick Jagger, you have to love it. I mean, that guy, they got all the money in the world. They got all the chicks in the world and they're still doing it at the highest level. That's true. That's true. And he better keep on doing it because as long as he keeps on doing it, Alice will keep touring and then I'll keep on having a job. No, so nobody's that? stopping. <laughs> nobody's stopping. They'll just be dead. That's when they'll stop. And Alice, he'll go to the end. And I respect him for that. There you go. All right. Well, there he is. We're hanging out with Tommy Clefettis, the Grim Reaper of rock and roll. He will tell you what right. you, the, the things you don't want to yeah. hear, but you need to hear. You can't I handle guess the so. truth. I guess All right. So. One more segment we have called <laughs> The One That Got Away. You'll love this animation, Vic. Let's do it. Oh, God. Come on. Perhaps that, that's a guy giving up on his rock and roll dream right now. <laughs> Could be. Could be. Was that your hand, though? It was not with, my hand. With the black was, nail polish. <laughs> I haven't worn nail polish since Same New thing. Zealand. New Zealand 2020. Uh, What's February. really sick is that you know that. Well, because there's no reason to wear like pants or nail polish. Like in my house. Oh, since the yeah, I get it. Okay. Yeah, so so so, so in, yeah. in in at the end, the last tour was New Zealand in February of 2020. So I can hardly wait to turn on, you know, to take out that last nail polish. I think I'm not sure. You'll do you it. Got, you, you, yeah, you'll, you'll do, do it. it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'm Kidding. a lifer. Yeah. <laughs> the one that got away is uh, inspired by Stanley Gable. Um, we ask you about a piece of gear that you wish you still had, but it's been lost, stolen, or you had to sell it. And obviously none of those, none of that gear, I think you probably own it all. It's in your rehearsal studio. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what happened, but I got into getting amps and all this kind of crazy stuff. Um, I'm not really sentimental about gear. I've had so much stuff. To me, it's just a tool. But I think you should have the right stuff at the time. I think it's very important to have something that, a musical instrument that inspires you to play. Um, so, I mean, from doing gigs and working to buy better drum sets and I mean, it's all part of a pride thing. You know, I always took care of my gear. I was always um, into it and cleaning it and setting it up and fixing it on your own before you had money to do, to, you know, just get new ones or whatever. Um, but yeah, just get the best gear that you can. I've had a lot of cool drums, but do I miss any of them? Nah, because I can just, if, if, if they break, I just order another one now. So when you got enough money to get them, they give them to you for free. What a, what a oxymoron so that is. Same thing with getting yeah. drinks and clubs. Yeah, it's the yeah. same way. Whenever but you I do, I do remember when you're, when you're young and when I played, I would go through 12 pairs of sticks a night and break a cymbal. And that was in one gig you break. Where do you get all this shit? I, I have no idea, but it looks like were, were you the one in the UCLA cap? Is that you on the No, uh, no, that's me with a saxophone for some reason. Oh, and wow. that guy okay. next to me in the white t-shirt is we went we grew up together from the fourth grade. We we moved to California together. He literally lives five minutes away from me now, Tommy Peacock. Wow. And and you all decided to wear blue pants that day. Were you, is it the, well, this, the blue pants group? Isn't is it called? Blue? Isn't it called jeans? That's oh, a, well, <laughs> maybe. I did, yeah, they just look yeah. like blue pants to oh. me. I just thought you were in a band called the Blue yeah. Pants Group. That's all. Um, well, a shout out to your uh, equipment that you talked about with your tools. Uh, who are you using now, and who would you like to give credit to? Because you mentioned sticks, you mentioned drums, and maybe you mentioned cymbals. Because I know you play hard as hell. Um, well, right. Give, I just signed back up with. Um, the first endorsement I had on drums, which is Sonar Drums. Um, you back which are, with Sonar? Uh, back with Sonar Drums. They're a German company and they make awesome drums. So I'm very happy to be back with them. Another German company supplies my cymbals and drumsticks called Minel. And then a California company, Aquarian Drumheads. And that's it. I play great stuff and they take care of me. So it's all good. You know who else is a German company? Hughes and okay. Kentner. Okay. So congratulations, Matt. You won this. Amplified now is that is that a thing that you can plug an amp into to, yes I mean, a you, you, cabinet? You, you, yes you can plug it with a cabinet and you can also plug it right directly into your uh you know your digital workstation 
uh, or like a computer. Work. Is that what that means? Yeah, you can you can go into your yeah. computer. You can, okay. you, but you can that play a kind live of stuff's gig. Pretty cool. Yeah, you can play your yeah. live gig, and you can play also play. Uh, you know, through your house. In, in I headphones. just miss the days. There, there, there is something to when you got to pick up your four twelve cabinet and you're picking up your road cases and your luggage. There is a grittiness to it you know what it's, i mean it's the reason why i my yeah. first car was a ford courier it, because exactly. it had a back because it could fit a 412 cabinet and i could at least go right. to rehearsal and i mean i'm still that way i like i got a pickup truck because oh i'm taking amps to the studio and maybe once in a drums it's just the the whole mindset of when you play rock and you're into it 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 goes in you do everything you get your a certain kind of car you you know it you save money to buy strings or to get sim. You know what I mean? It all works yeah. itself into it. You're building your way up. And yeah. Well, the career path, the career trajectory that you've had is good. You've always planned it out well. Like I said, most I of the things. I didn't plan anything. Well, you have, you might not have planned it, but just by knowing you and seeing how focused you were when you were in the Alice Cooper band, people knew that the trajectory was up. It wasn't, It you weren't getting caught up in the bullshit. You were definitely on your, you know. No, that's why I stay trajectory. home and I do my gig for me. I do my gig and I go home. And the, the more you stay away from everything else, you don't get mixed up in it, you know. Well, that's our very own. Because at the, at, the, at the end of the day, all people care about is the job that you did on stage. You know what I mean? They're not going to say, well, he sucked on stage, but what a nice guy. It doesn't work that way. They're going to say, fuck, that guy was horrible. I hate him, even if he is a nice guy. You know, <laughs> They may say, what a dick, but he sure can play the drums. You know, Which is not bad. Well, it's not bad, but if you can have both, it works in your favor. You know, well, But it doesn't, it doesn't work the way of, he sucked, but he's sure fun to hang around with. Let's hire him. Sometimes it does, but right. that goes away. <laughs> but that goes that away. Go away. Yeah. <laughs> Keith Moon could do both. He was a perfect. Well, he played like, great. He was the perfect drummer for played. the Who. He was yeah. the perfect drummer. You know. Uh, well, there it is. There's one drummer that we can say a tiny bit inspiring for Tommy. No, Maybe I not. mean I I love all these great drummers, but these are band drummers. You know what I mean? And they were Phil Rudd. Perfect drummer for ACDC. Bill Ward, perfect drummer for Black Sabbath. Neil Smith, perfect drummer for Alice Cooper. Now, if you flip them in different bands, they probably sound horrible. You know what I feel like I'm doing right now, Tommy? I feel like I'm at a drummer's lunch. He's perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's go. But they Let's wouldn't go. be saying that. They'd be, they say, probably they'd be talking they'd... about... Oh, the did pedal. you hear uh, 2112 or something, you know? <laughs> well, we are I don't even on... know what 2112 is. It, it... Oh, dude, 2112. That's the way that uh, Exodus, every ba every local band, every town has a band called Exodus. I, I think What's probably. Exodus? It, what's that? It was, it was the band that I, in my high school, that did oh. side one of 20. And the lead singer said, we are not going to do side one of 2112. Like yeah, that. yeah. Where's that guy now? He probably <laughs> um, works at IBM and makes some. He's real actually money. selling real estate. Oh yeah, my God, uh, Tommy yeah. the Grim Reaper of Rock mm -hmm. is right. Yeah. Tommy, we're going to do a brand new segment right now. Uh, get me wow, this screen is real a, quick. How, how uh, many this, more of these segments? Shows. This is the last one, and then okay. then we got to sit. Then you're heading out to the highway. All right, okay, good. Because we all got dinner over here, and uh, you've got breakfast. Thank what? you. What? Oh, you, you got any meat? Meatballs, Swedish meatballs. Uh, what no, do you got? No, no, I'm married to a South African, so we will have. We, um, I remember you took me to have this at a hotel. Great Swedish meatballs, yes. a nice joint, real um, nice. It, it was. Where was that? It was down. Well, you were staying at the you were Grand Hotel, right? The Grand Hotel, and um, I think we went to this place called um, what was it? It called? was small, but it was very good. I remember. Yes, yeah, super good, and th that they're known for their meatballs. It was either Riche or it was Cafe Opera. I think it might and have been. Little, I got to say this: Opera. I love Sweden. I love coming to Stockholm. It's one of my favorite places to come. First of all. The one thing that I did notice about my album is it seems like all those Nordic countries, they love it. They're really getting it because they're into straight rock. They're, there's a scene there that, you know, and, and they, they, um, 
you know, the arts are a bigger thing there, I can tell. But what a clean city, what a beautiful city. Everybody looks nice, well taken care of. In fact, one of the places I told my wife she's got to come to is Sweden. And I took her there and she loved it. It's just the perfect town. I love it. Well, you know what? Catch us up real quick. Be catch me outside. Um, catch us quick on that because we're good. we're headed to uh, South Africa in a couple of years. So come, in, moving? come soon. South Africa seems oh to be the God. new, it's the new Sweden. Is it? <laughs> You're know. moving there for real, are you? My wife's South African. It's, it's natural. You know, it seems like the natural place to go. I mean, and, and all of a sudden, as you said, where I lived in California, because we actually looked at going back to the States. It's you said it's like a war zone now, and no, well, you don't want to where I live war now. Zone. Where I live, I moved to Valencia, and it's still it's very normal, like safe here. It's about as normal as you can get for Magic now, Mountain area, right around Magic Mountain. Little, little, yeah, little ish, closer. little more in, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but okay. it's it's mellow. But where you you used to live, yeah, it's like a war zone, man. It's yeah. it's horrible. All right, but well. That's Listen, California. One one more segment, and then okay, before I get no problem. Because this is a very heartfelt one. I'm going to go full screen, Vic, because this brand new segment we have, fan of the week. All right, we're dedicating this segment to one of our RGA faithful that passed away last week, and her name is Carol Parker. You guys know her, the hamster, Carol Hammy Parker. Uh, she partly came up with this idea of getting supporters and even more involved in the podcast and all things Roxy. So from now on. Each week, we'll celebrate the person that shows extraordinary effort when it comes to promoting or to spreading the word about the podcast or an upcoming tour or maybe even the System 12 guitar method or maybe maybe even Vic's new mustache or what about your wristbands? that he's grown. And maybe my wristbands. Whatever you're doing, you could earn the title of Fan of the Week. So with this new segment, let's pay tribute to Carol Parker, Fan of the Week. And there you go. Jingle this provided by Robbie Miller. This was a lady that passed away. She was a fan. Carol Hammy Parker. Uh, she how did she pass away? <sighs> suddenly, and well, it wasn't suddenly. She she's been emailing me and messaging me since the beginning of the year, saying things are not good, things are not looking good, and then it is just it like a, uh, or you don't know, like a cancer situation. What, what a yeah. shame. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's 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 too bad. Yeah. She she obviously saw us back in the day. She's been following us since you know the early Alice days. So she life saw, is short, man. Life is short, and you got to do your best. Figure out what you, know, you want to do. In music, you no, know, you you see all these guys that pass away, whether they're doing drugs or whatever, and you go, "What a shame, man!" You know. Well, so you got to keep it small and keep your family together, and 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 you know, be positive and love one another. Well, Carol Parker, you're our honorary fan of the rest week. Rest in peace, and Carol. Rest in peace, baby. Make it a, make it a, uh, a celebration wherever you are yep. right now. And uh, the reason why the album is uh, getting popular right now, I'm talking about Tommy's rock trip, maybe up here in Scandinavia, because everybody up here is beat up by rock and roll. So if you're beat up by rock and roll, uh, what's the easiest, best way to go check out Tommy's rock trip right now? I don't know. I think it's all on the Amazons. It's all on the Spotify's. It's all on the whatever people listen to music on now you know what i mean that's why we call this heading out to the highway this is where you actually say what's the best way to get in touch with you on your social medias to all those that are listening on the audio broadcast i don't well. have any social media they set up some stuff for the band there you know the record company but i i don't want anybody to contact me i don't want anybody to know where <laughs> i live i don't want to go to any lunch with anybody i don't want to message anybody back I'm not interested in it. <laughs> Damn, I feel so lucky that I've had this time right now with you today because you have spent a good hour plus in the trenches. Well, and, you're my uh, buddy. Well, thank you very much. You don't man. call any ever since you got back in the Alice band. You never call. You used to call me every day when you didn't have the, the gig, and now I never hear. I from will you. call you from now on. I will call you more often. I really will. Yeah. And I'll uh, and I'll ask you for one word answers about bands that you've played. Yeah, I can't. Do, I'm not good at one word. I've. I've the older I get, the more of a loud mouth I become. You become all. Yeah. You've always been a little, like I said, a smarty pants. But you're always well. Where pushing, I'm from, that that's that's how Detroit, we do it. Baby. It shows our love. We don't pussyfoot yeah. around. You know, California. My wife's Cal from California, and we are like polar opposites. In Detroit, you think the worst of somebody, and they have to prove you wrong. 
in California, you think of the best of anybody until they prove you wrong. And that's the truth. So we right. both we've both kind of slowly met in the middle there. I'm glad that we have. Yeah. You, you no, know what? My, me and my, her have. Oh, what about me and you and our hair? No, our you're sort of met in the middle. You're California all the way. You're like really? You know, you are, uh, yeah. Yeah, you're a California guy. Just wait till I become South African. But yeah. I, I feel that our hairstyles have met a little bit more how you know, sort of in the middle. I've become more curly. I've let my, my I've let my curl show. And uh, but I don't you have see, a, you don't I, see my it? hair is just I don't. My hair is just it is what it is. It's oh, it's man. madness. <laughs> I'm glad my daughter doesn't have hair like me because getting the knots out would have been treacherous. Stylish, talented, yeah. driven. Hey, uh, Ryan, th thanks for having that. me. I appreciate it. It's very nice to talk to you and to talk music. And yeah. uh, you have a very professional show. Tell Steph and I said hello. You guys yeah. are kind of like, you guys are like Letterman and Leno. At, at, are we? At the, okay. No, uh, but not at all. Not at all. <laughs> not well, even, not yeah, but you should have. You should have heard him when when uh, he knew I was coming on your your shindig here. He oh, boy. he he oh, had to boy. get me first. He had to get me first. <laughs> did he really do that? Did he try and like he poached you? Oh he, man, he did a poaching. It's, oh my It's goodness. all competition with Stefan. Wow, which is so, good. Is he Rob Zombie and I, and and I'm Ozzy? Or it would no, be it's, you know, not, it's not like that. It's all we we move in waves, baby. It, oh, there he is. is. You know what? He's in the chat right now. That who? Oh, there, there he is. Yeah, he's, sorry, taking, he's he's taking notes right now too. He's thinking, oh, yeah. who can I Steph get next? Maybe I shouldn't even tell us who's on next week because if I if I'd no. say who's on next week, who is on next week? If I can actually, ask, the uh, lead See how I did of that? Iron Maiden. Uh, oh. I don't, do we have an actual? Uh, Vic saying yes. Oh, he's saying wait. We have an actual card Maybe. provided by Federica Roby, our social media coordinator. Wow, Stefan, he's got yeah. the singer of Iron Maiden, Bruce Dickinson. The no, legend. no, no, not Bruce Dickinson. Hold on, <laughs> just go, hold your horses. Oh, the former Blaze Bailey is going to be our uh, guest, and Blaze is a work. He's a workaholic, dude. He's like you. He has that. But same you said worth the singer. You said of the Iron singer. Maiden. Yeah, well, there's but a he's lot not of the, singers. If he's I said the former the, singer, I mean, there could be. There's like, how many singers of of, of uh, Iron know. Maiden I've, have there been? I think there's been three. I don't know um, Iron Maiden's music. I'm giving actually. Vic so much time to put up this thing, and he still can't well, even Vic, get it up. Don't worry about it, Vic. It's all over. Okay, Stephen's don't worry. Already, don't worry. Stephen's Stephen. already googling him. <laughs> don't worry, Stefan. <laughs> I love it. So, so thanks so much. Coming. All my best to your. Please say hi to your kids and. And uh, your beautiful wife, and and let me know before you move. And I honestly will. And there's ba oh Blaze Bailey next week. Do that looks like George the Animal episode. Steel. George the Animal Steel slash Blaze Bailey will be our guest. Remember that he used to have the tongue. George the Animal Steel lived in the same apartment building as my father in Florida in no his way. later years. I met the man. Yes, I met nice I met guy. him too when I was a kid. At they used to have this thing called Autorama that would have bands and cars and like. You know, wrestling guy. I remember me meeting him, and he signed my picture, and he went, and he has <laughs> green on the tongue. More hair on his back than Stefan Adika. Yes, but, that's <laughs> but not by much. Not but he was nice. Much. He was a nice guy, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Very yeah, sweet yeah, yeah. man. Very yeah. sweet. Another God. Another man. Uh, God rest his soul. Maybe yeah. he'll be the next fan of the week. We shall see. Right. But no. No, no passing away. I don't want to be of the week. You do have to be. Yeah, I was going to say. No, no, you, no, 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 yeah, yeah. It's not going to be post mortem. None of okay. that. But just Carol Parker. This episode is yeah. dedicated to you, Tommy. Good. Hold on one more second. Go check out Tommy's Rock Trip album is out right now. And if you want to get in touch with Tommy through social media, forget about it. Ain't going to happen. But go check out Beat Up by Rock and Roll. Thank you very much, Tommy, for being on in the trenches. Until next hey, time, folks. Thank you. Enjoy the ride. I'm See trying ya. to dig myself out. Trenches with Ryan Roxy. <laughs>